You're tuned in to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. Welcome back to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast, where we are showcasing the coolest brands and gifts while featuring movers and makers. I'm your host, Lenore, and our media gal, Michelle, is joining us in this episode. Hello. Hello, Lenore. You excited to drink some good stuff today? Always, of course. Now, I personally love when family recipes, um, we have them, you know? They honestly, because it says a family recipe, I personally think that they just taste a little bit better. <laughs> just to like know they came from like grandma or grandma's grandma or down the line. Now, Sherpa has passed down their family chai recipes from generation to generation to generation. Now, Sherpa chai harvested in the Himalayas and brewed in Boulder, Colorado is the most authentic chai made from the highest quality of ingredients. Now, their founder, Pemba Sherpa, joins us to tell his story on how he turned his family recipe into a thriving business. Pemba, welcome to the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Now, we need to hear the story of the Sherpa tea. It has been passed down from, I think, what was it, your great-grandmother? That's generation after generation after generation. Like, how did this tea come about? Well, I mean, the uh, chai is the uh, essential part of drink in that part of the world for uh, literally thousands of years. I mean, I've been drinking this product since I was an infant. In fact, when I grew up in this little village in Nepal, I had to walk three hours to get to school. And my mom used to make me this product every morning before I walked to the school. Then when I came to the U.S., I opened a restaurant here. And uh, that's where I start serving there like gallons and gallons every day. And I was hearing from many customers saying that your chai product is really good. You should bottle it. And I, at the time, I didn't really care about it and didn't really thought about it. And I was keep hearing more and more of this. And then I thought maybe there's a market for it and maybe there's a need for it. And uh, I went out there and did a bunch of research. And surprisingly, I saw like a hand full of a chai product out there in the market. And I tasted all of it. And I, I, I really don't like to put other people's product down. But personally, I didn't find any good authentic chai product out in the market. And at that point, I was like, oh, OK. There's no authentic chai product out in the market. And the market for it, there's probably need for it. And that's where I start uh, bottling the uh, chai. So what is the tea made out of? Because you do have a couple different flavors. We have traditional here with us right now. It's already open because our staff in the studio has started to drink it today. Okay. So what is the tea originally made of? Well, the chai has a, you know, it's basically chai is a tea. You know, chai means a tea in the Mandarin. It has a bunch of spices uh, added, like uh, fresh, fresh gingers, cardamom, cinnamon, black peppers, uh, cloves, which are all, you know, good beneficial to the health. So those products are all added in a chai and then we brew it. Now we do see, Michelle gave me some milk earlier, right? Because yep. on the back it says, in the back of the bottle it says you can part, um, you can part with your favorite milk substitute. So right. do you have to do that? Does that make it taste better? Does it lose the taste? Like, what are your thoughts? That's just how that's how the chai is been drink it. You put half tea, half milk, and you add it, and you mix it, and you drink it. Right? You heat it up, or you can also drink it cold. You know, simply you can put it over the ice, half milk, half tea, or you can just throw over the uh, ice and drink iced chai. It's all how how you how you prefer. But ideally, you wanted to add half milk, half tea, and heat it up and drink a hot chai. That's the best way to drink it. What's your favorite way to drink it? Do you prefer that's, to have it hot? That's, that's my favorite way to drink it. It's, you know, put half milk and half chai and then heat it up. But which flavor though? Traditional, mm. Michelle, which ones we got over there? Uh, right here I have, this one's the spicy right. over here. And then I also have turmeric, turmeric ginger. ginger. Yep. Well, that's a new product we just came up with. But the traditional is how we drink in uh, growing up. That's a very, very authentic family recipe. And we came up with the spicy because we have a customers, you know, they're exposed to a little bit more spice chai and they ask us to make it. And we start making it the spicy one and which actually doing really well now. And lots of people seems to like the spice one too. So the you basically have like a Sherpa lifestyle, not just the Sherpa chai, the tea, the restaurant, everything else. How 
How have you been able to create such a big mission with your family's name and what pushes you forward? Well, I believe that no matter where you go, no matter what you do, uh, no matter who you are, I think I believe it's important to be uh, important to be connected with your family, your culture, and your root. You know. Yeah, your roots. You're going back. You're going back, like to your roots, and you're taking everybody to yep. a hike to where you grew up as well. That and you're doing that in the I, fall, right? Yep. Yep. Tell us about that adventure that you have coming up. Well, this is a very, very unique trip. So anybody who wanted to join this trip, I think that's the true way to experience Nepal and the culture of the Nepal. And uh, we're going to be going to uh, this very secret valley called Lumdi. It's literally parallel to our average best game. It's more prettier. And for a week, we're not going to be seeing one other tourist. This valley is absolutely spectacular. And this whole trip, I mean, we're going to be spending lots of time in the villages. For example, where I grew up and uh, surrounding other neighbors. I mean, when I take people over there, I mean, I, I want them to experience the real things. This is a very unique trip. It's not like uh, unlike uh, other commercial uh, uh, trek, you know, where they just go to every space game and see uh, more tourists and all that. So, yeah. So what made you decide to start your restaurant? For me, I'm a very social person, okay? I like to be around with people. And the restaurant is perfect for me because it's not only economic foundation, but it's also a uh, social, social and, uh, and the cultural fabric for me. So if Michelle and I yeah. get on a plane and come to Boulder, Colorado and come to your restaurant, will you actually be there? Yeah, yeah. I'm there like every day. <laughs> every day. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and I enjoy it. You know, I've been meeting, I enjoy meeting people. I enjoy, you know, talking to people and, you know, I, I love being around with people. And, and for me, this is a good business. What actually brought you to America? Why did you pick Colorado? <laughs> Well, you know, I was a, I was a mountain guide in Nepal. Oh, I saw, I saw pictures of yeah. you going up and down mountains, yeah. my friend. Oh yeah, I was a professional mountain guide in Nepal, and I first came out, you know, after guiding several years in Nepal, I kind of developed a curiosity for the West, which which I finally visited the U.S. in like thirty years ago. You know, then of course I got into like. Uh, lots of technical climbings, and I really enjoy being around Colorado, and I made my best game here ever since. Yeah, there are a lot of mountains there. Like, yep, yep. You can live your best life. All right. <laughs> yeah, and you did also just write um, your life story in a book. It's called Bridging Words, A Sherpa Story. What, what do you want the readers to walk away with after reading that? I wrote this book because I wanted to share my story. And I believe everybody has some kind of a story, right? And, uh, but I do believe that I have a very unique story. And A, I wanted to share that. But B, really that, you know, uh, I wanted to give people awareness because, you know, my part of the land, the Kumbu, the Everest area, it's really been polluted uh, by tourists. And also uh, the safety of the uh, Sherpas in the mountains. There are so many Sherpas uh, who have died on the Everest or dying in the mountains. And I, I believe, you know, without protocol on the place, safety concern will continue to be a problem. And it's working Sherpas <clears throat> and the other Himalayans who bear the burns of the wrecks. The histories of Sherpa's death on the Everest is as early as the industry itself, ever since the, uh, 1922, uh, when seven Sherpas were killed in avalanche during the second British expedition. A disproportionate number of Sherpas have died on the Everest. Some 293 climbers have perished. In all 175 members and 118 Sherpas. All right, this does not even include the 11 Sherpas who have died in, uh, in 2019. And, and, then, and then there's another factor, you know, there's another, uh, the environment. Uh, people in my regions, back in all those days, people used to drink like uh, clean, clear glacier waters. 
and now they are drinking polluted waters. And I see that's a problem there, you know, and Nepal is a third world country and the infrastructure there are not done properly. And Nepal have like only 27% of uh, proper sanitation and <clears throat> children under the age of the five are the most affected with estimated 44,000 children dying every year from a waterborne disease. And I, I do like that you are uh, telling not just your story, not just your family's story, but like your town, your country's story, and just really trying to get that out there and even giving back with your Sherpa tea as well. Exactly. I mean, that's that's one of the, one of the purpose that I wrote this book is that I want to give the awareness to people, letting people know what's going on in that part of the world. And I'm not saying that people shouldn't go there because there's this environment problem and people dying in mouth because Nepal does really need tourists. Okay, Nepal, you know, Nepal is, tourism is like second uh, largest source of uh, foreign exchange in Nepal, uh, earning about three hundred sixty million dollars a year. Trekking and climbing is the big, big part of that income, and they need tourism badly. Uh, but what I'm saying is that, you know, in the Kumbu region, the area where I come from, I mean, there's literally about annually about 50,000 tourists entering there every year, right? And there's not such a thing as a, there's not such a thing as a sewage system or toilet systems are properly set up here. Those minor so things that we take advantage of, like here in the United States, not thinking about where our water comes from or where the bathroom is and yep. those little things, um, unfortunately, we do take for granted sometimes. Yep. Yeah, and, and I do hope, uh, I mean, my hope is that by people reading my book, you know, maybe some people, somebody like maybe like Gate Foundation might step in and say, hey, I believe what you're saying, and I wanted to help this area. And maybe Sherpa Chai will grow one day, and maybe I can help in that area. But I do believe that the area needs help desperately, in, uh, and at least need this. If something needs to be fixed there. It is a problem. Well, you and, are keeping that story alive with Richard Pachai, your your book, your missions, and honestly, just going back and forth and just sharing your story. So thank you for that. Yeah, you're welcome. Yes. And I'm excited that we have all this tea that we could drink. Like I said, it's already like starting to go out because everybody here in the studio is like, you know, taking sips and sips and sips. We've only opened up the traditional yet, yep. Pemba. We'll, we'll get to the other ones. Don't you worry. We'll have like a chai party and okay. a little like chai tea party. Okay. So you can grab your Sherpa Chai yep. at SherpaChai.com. That's S-H-E-R-P-A-C-H-I.com. You can check them out. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even YouTube at Sherpa Chai. Pemba Sherpa, the founder, the co-owner. And thank you for not just showing us an incredible chai tea, but being open enough to share your story and the missions that you are on on your life. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Now that's a wrap on another episode of the Brand Ambassador Select Podcast. I'm your host, Lenore, and Michelle's hanging out with us today. Now hit that subscribe button so you never miss one. More at brandambassadorselect.com, and we will see you next time.